Poor Lady Express with me. <laughs> with Rockin' Mary Rockin' and Trench co-host Thomas Ray. Well, thank you, Thomas. That was uh, my special co-host for this show, Thomas Ray a fellow Oregon Pleading contact uh, buddy of mine who's been on the show twice before. And it had been a while since Thomas and I had a chance to catch up. We were just chatting during the pre-show for a while and mulling over some things and seeing what was going on in each other's lives. And, hey, Thomas, welcome to the show, man. And, you know, I know that, like, I felt the need to really have you back on sometime soon. And you were talking to me tonight in one of the groups and, Tell me you really needed to do a show, and so like here we are, and I think it's a great thing. So tell everybody what's been going on since your last visit, man. Oh, the world has been fluctuated by the tiltus of the axis of the planets arranged with the moon, I tell you. Uh, it certainly has. That's quite the way to put it, but yeah, I, I would say I have to agree. <laughs> yeah. Well... Since our last speaking, uh, the universe has definitely been doing some rocking and rolling with Mr. Rockin' Larry Lockin. Um, many junctures are moving very vastly through us right now, and Larry and I were speaking of it earlier, is we all need to become a stronger beacon of positivity and forward motion. And by this being over iterated on us over and over and over again, we have the same same effect over and over again. And it's by the rearings of our upbringing and our environments that we are surrounded in is how we have perceived ourselves within the mix of the illusion. And... I kind of want to step into this arena right now and speak of this tonight because Larry and I had a really great pre-show talk and uh, kind of sparked a few things of things that are happening with me, with my guides, with Archangel Michael and I, um, and my other Archangels that guide me through my blasting of this universe that I'm in. And there's a lot of things happening. Uh, we We are searching for answers. We're searching for uh, instant gratification, like always, but we, we we are coming finally to our, our, our ends of our needs because we're finding that we are of a spiritual being. We are of a divineness of this cosmo that we're in. The cosmo. And so... Yeah, nothing, say, hey, nothing says Pleiadian stuck in 3D like self-gratification, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Throwing dice. <laughs> it's a gamble. It's great. It's, it's Like I said, you know, it's instant gratification. And um, what I'm thinking here, Larry, is that, uh, rocking Larry, that is, uh, is that um, we need to define our oneself if not... Of a of a genre or of a congregation or of an identity that labels us of being distinguished as who we are, as of like we'd say, or I'm a Jew, I'm Jewish, or I'm Catholic, or I'm a Christian, or I'm a Muslim, or I'm whatever that I may be. Uh, what we spoke about before is about the steps of knowing of I, who you are, I identifying with who you are and becoming I. And I think that more people are becoming themselves now. But unfortunately, we still have a lot of people that haven't opened their doors yet. They're keeping it to themselves, per se. And I think that uh, if we continue to make positive thoughts, that we can actually start emanating those steps and actually make them reality instead of just being a mind thought, kind of how we were talking about earlier, Larry, with, you know, people have have allowed themselves to 
from so far back that they're impeding their own positive progression, you know. Um, Yeah, definitely. You cut out a little bit on that one, brother, but it, definitely people just – it's like they, they, they want to get in the way of seeing just how great they are, and they don't – they don't. you know, it's so hard for them to believe in something so great and something so supernatural could be true in their lives and that they could really be who, that they, who they wanted to be and should be. They've been kept down by – the institutions, um, just by the programming. And I think we talked about that too, about the programming, about I'd ask you the question in the pre-show. I mean, it's almost like these people that are brainwashed by watching TV, and it's happened to all of us over the years. We're stuck in that illusionary world there of the programming, and it cuts us off from any of the higher realms or any of our guides, or at least that's what it attempts to do anyway, you know. And... I know you and I both have the same feelings about TV, not that neither one of us don't watch it sometimes, but we've seen some things on there and seen some weird, oh, I don't know, you know, like on late night TV, I see some weird things in the background. I can just see these entities and they're sometimes that control this. And it, it's just like I think my Pleiadian guide or higher self coming through to me and myself seeing this. And I know, you know, you've seen some similar things and, it's just part of this programming, I think, that we've been brainwashed by and, and kept down. Frequency, just, a, just it's just been a frequency control, really. I think simply. Why right, we need to churn out the noise and churn up the love and churn up the the ability to show love and not just have love, but to show it and share it within an extenuation of who we are as a physical. Entity, and not just throw around words. We're so used to having the escape goats of words. Well, I, I said that because I was upset. I said that because I was sad. I said that because whatever excuse may be, but we need to be of who we say we are and speak clearly through who we are so we can, you know, be able to extenuate physically into the three dimension that we live in that we hope that we can find ourselves more into the four dimensional but we all know that most most of us uh, only experience 3D because of our own well honestly our own laziness you know so yeah, yeah and really in the 4D experience it's not that big of a stretch it ain't like it's not like going to 5D but you know when you're talking about the subtle betterness better things about it you know it's more responsive instead of reactive it's it's all knowing but yet you know no judgment and, and and that's a big one too you know you had mentioned you know what you, what you had just said about you know the the we've got to Basically, we've got to take accountabilities for the way we treat people and everything and be a person of our word. And the thing about it is we've also got to be able to forgive people and understand, like, you know, you were mentioning, like, if I say a word, you know, I said that because I was mad. I did this because I was mad. And people also got to be willing to forgive people, though, that do that and understand that. And if we can both be cautious of using that kind of a negative vibration, but as well as... Oh, I don't know. I guess as well as just you know understand that that person was mad and just show each other some love and understanding, you know, with no judgment and yet all knowing. But then on the other side, it really, honestly, why should we be mad in the first place? To be truly mad, be mad at one because be mad at somebody else that be mad at yourself first. Well, yeah, yeah, that would be a good question for somebody else. If you were just asking that to me, Brother Pleiadian, I don't know because I don't resonate with it at all either. And the first, that's a great question because it's like from our standpoint is why in the first goddamn place should you be upset? And that, that's, that's where it really starts with people is the, why are they upset? They're mad at themselves. And, man, I'm getting a lot of feedback on your end. Um if you if you could mute your mic possibly when I talk like I'm doing with you, but yeah, I totally agree with you. It's always a in the mirror thing. Anything you don't like about something about somebody else is usually a problem within yourself that you're you know that you need to work on and face.
Mr. Ray, are you there? See, this happens a lot, you know, when, when Thomas and I have done shows together before and when we talk our Oregon Pleiadian energy, I think it bogs down a system. We either have a problem with reception on one of our ends, speaker issues, um, getting kicked out of the room, so Thomas, can you hear me? Okay, man. Hey, your mic is cutting out really, really bad. Of course, this is th this happened earlier. I think he, he's just being he's being his Pleiadian humor self and messing with with the mic. But hey, for our uh, for our Earth listeners, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Awesome. awesome. Sorry about that. There's something going on with the app. Not, I don't know what it was, but the app wasn't letting me open it. It was not showing me that I was even on. Okay. Okay, we're back now. All right. So, anyway, we were talking about just talk to us about some of the things that have been going on on your life with you know the consciousness level. I know that you've made some personal changes in your life since the last time we had talked, and for the better. Well, actually, kind of things that just happened for you, so that's good. And you know, just talk a little bit about that and. Tell us a little bit, maybe refresh the audience a little bit about your background with the Pleiadians and your guides. Well, in the last time we saw, uh, just a lot of uh, personal things have just like completely, you know, uh, turned and did a little 180 dance on me. I, uh, I've had to do an instant move in my life, and that's been kind of an interesting situation because. I had known of these places for quite some time, and I've always kind of thought I should live here. And without, you know, really any planning of it, I uh, I looked into moving into the places, and uh, I, for unforeseen reasons, I could not move in immediately. And they had people told me that I could not move into the place until. Um, I told them I couldn't move in until another month away, and they said they couldn't hold it for me. And so it was kind of in a pickle because I was a, a month behind on moving out. And out of nowhere, they still had the place available for me when I could move. And just with that alone, I know it sounds kind of really kind of personal conversation about what, what's been happening with me, but. <laughs> things have been manifesting so quickly that I live in the now I, I don't I, I'm so present that things just manifest as I need them and present immediately I was off course a week ago and I was not in my right mindset with a lot of things happening because things were too fast, too quick and the universe you know, stop my whole world and said, slow down, get your bearings, and, and calm down. And I, I tripped and fell, and I took a bunch of skin off my big toe, and I broke my pinky finger, and now I've got a broken finger, and I've had to spend the last week, you know, week plus, learning how to adapt to my environment with a broken finger, you know, and a messed up and so Ooh. the universe no. throws you down and you go and you and well that's true that sure was enlightening and nice of you to share with the audience about 
breaking your various um, limb parts, man. I hope you're okay and everything like that. Um, that was really entertaining radio. And yeah, that's funny what you mentioned about this sounds like a personal conversation because I was sitting here thinking, it, you know, it's leading to something that we need to talk about. But I was thinking the same thing, like somebody was picking up over a scan or two people having a, you know, just a catch up boring conversation. But, you know, we, we started talking on the pre-show and we were having a pretty good flow talking about, you know, things that your guides had told you recently about you know, things coming up and people needing to prepare for them. And I think we're going through those transitions right now already. You're seeing a lot of the dark energy um, leave the earth in subtle ways. I noticed that people around me that aren't necessarily you would consider awakened are, are making, you know, more sensitive, loving decisions in things of that nature. And, and I just think that that's going on and, it's just been really intense. You know, I needed to take a step back for a while from Facebook too because the energies were just too strong and I'd been hitting it hard. And But I, I feel like kind of like getting almost getting over a hump now. And, I, you know, I'm glad to hear that that's going on with you as well. And I'm with you, brother. And, you know, just what is it that you'd like to really share with everybody out there and tell them, no, by the way, I know I'm late getting this in, but congratulations, man, on – yourself as well as Sierra Morris and all the other admins of Pleiadians, Reiki, Healers, and Beginners. 5,000 members as of today. That's incredible. And thank you for all your hard work adminning in the regional group, Pleiadians Pacific Northwest. So I think that's really incredible that the group has reached that level so quickly. And it's just really exciting. And thank you for being a part of it. But, you know, the floor is yours, one man, basically. Well, Larry, Rockin, Larry, Lockin. Um, you know, more than anything is that through my my guides, my Pallades guides and my Archangel guides, you know, we need to knock on doors. We need to stop and tell people the good news. We need to become stewards that are. Every step, every moment is a better step towards the personal disclosure to yourself and to others so we can begin our next staging, so we can experience the next, you know, the next age of, of our, you know, usher in this age of Aquarius and allow us to be a part of it instead of on these sidelines of, negativity and like what Larry and I were speaking about with religion standard is that we need to understand that those are just pilings of information through thousands of years of documentation and that we've all got the insight of the premise of what they present. Now we need to become stewards like Jesus or Yahweh or Buddha or whoever it is in your denomination that's the leader of the pack we need to become those leaders of that because that's the story that we need to be writing for our our future right now is our our Jesus story, our God story, so we can be these stewards that we are, our God, that we are gods, and these are our vessels, and we are to lead by our greatness and by our positivities and our good fortunes, and we need to quit just isolating communion I mean, like Larry had stated, we have 5,000 members. In my opinion, that's amazing. You know, and I think it's absolutely great. I mean, I just started that. You know, Larry started that site for me. What was it, like four months ago, five months ago? You know, and it, yeah, it, it hasn't been very long. I created it. They were two of the last groups I created several months ago, that and the Pleiadian Twin Flame group. And they've just both taken off really, really great. And I want to get back to what you were talking about a little bit because we were talking about the Bible, you know, and I think I got to tell everybody how, how he put it. And it was so perfect in the pre-show. He's like, basically, it's just a scrapbook of history and writings from people. And that is so true because that is not it, – it's not a future predictor. That, that Bible, whether you want to say, okay, well, some of the books are missing out of it over the years or whatever, that's really not even relevant because – it's just a scrapbook of somebody's historical perspective on what they were witnessing, and it doesn't, you know, and it can even be interpreted at that differently. So 
we need to get out of that mentality. We're kind of rewriting our own prophecy, our own way to go about things, our own way to be better people and better as a society and kick it up a notch. Um, you know? the road, want the people that that time period, 50 years down the road, to look at us as being the instruction manual to an iPhone. I mean, that's what it's amounting to. We can't. We won't have a, a. We won't have a document within the scribings of there are now settings of who we are right now. Of having great documentations of who we are as humans on the planet, like they did in those time periods. You know, we're gonna have like an. We're gonna have like a droid. You know, type of scenario where we're not gonna have a a true surface. We're gonna have an interstructure of opinions and formulations of no actions. You know, because we, we all sit back and isolate our thoughts and our actions within our construings of our mind and not putting those emotions and those actions forward through our feet and hands and through our, our mouths. We're, we're constantly perpetuating the same synopsis and scenario over and over again in a vicious circle, you know? You know? Yeah, like a bad movie. And, but on the other hand, too, you know... It, it, if we open our minds, we can reach those levels of consciousness without having to, without having to get stuck in that inner structure and, you know, having that inner structure exist and just going along with the matrix and the program. Our consciousness can take us where we need to go, and yeah, it's just a matter of per per preserving our, you know, telling our story for future generations to see and giving them the consciousness and love to be conscious enough to where they really then again wouldn't really need to know this because they would innately just realize that it's there you know but this is our opportunity to do these things and we don't have to rely on some great historical figure for anything more than maybe an influence or maybe somebody you're interested in studying but all those consciousness beliefs like that would want you to ascend to greater heights than they did and figure out things of greater wisdom. So I think we just all need to understand how powerful and great we are. And when we exercise love, non-judgment, but yet all-knowing, you know, the skies and the cosmos are really truly the limit. First, believe in that. And that's that's the issue at hand, is that it's about believing. And that's what we lack. We lack their... Uh, <laughs> Excuse me, it was, it's trust. We lack trust. We lack just to lay down our defenses and and be and be. You know, and instead we're trying to always emulate and act like or be like something we see, you know, through our society, through our 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 small lenses of our lives. And that's normally through our TV, you know. And so if we can actually step back and <clears throat> be more of ourself, we'd be a lot better off. I mean, a lot better off. Yeah, and you know, in all honesty, I think that most anybody that would ever take the time to listen to this particular show already gets that and knows that. But I know that people are frost frustrated and bogged down with people in their lives and in their families that have been that way their whole life. And, you know, it, it's just like, you know, how do we get them to realize that? And maybe we get them to realize that by just being there for them out of love and not having expectations and knowing that they'll come around in their own time when they're meant to. So, but I think it's still important for starseeds to keep their eye on the prize and at the same time, you know, just be there and be loving for friends and family members that may not understand. And even just talking about things like this raises the vibration consciousness. You know what I mean? Even two people like us talking about it, it's an, it admits those vibrational waves out there of consciousness. A person doesn't need to go out in the streets with a sign and protest, right, for a cause and do that kind of thing. They can this these things can be excelled to newer heights by vibrations and by just putting that love and energy and talking about these things with people that aren't that are comfortable with talking about them certainly you don't want to force it on anybody but you know just take that extra step and be warm and loving and 
maybe start up a conversation with somebody who's maybe not as of like mind, you know? And be honest. Be completely honest. I mean, do not hold back at any cost. And when you start holding back, you then just evaporated your whole mission. You just made it irrelevant to what your mission was by objecting a lie. You know, by not saying something is the same as telling a lie. So we cannot continue to to perpetuate those white lies because a white lie is the same as a, a a white lie is a white lie is a lie. A lie is a lie. Doesn't matter what color the lie is, a lie is a lie. Yeah, but too though, man, I would think about your intention behind that. I mean, as long as right, I agree with you totally, right, with a couple parameters. You know, of course you don't want to say something to somebody that's going to impact something serious in their life, like, you know, or their relationship or something. You know, the, you use a little discretion, but I would say 99 times out of 100, you know, tell it like it is. And, you know, don't be afraid to tell it like it is. And don't be afraid if you've got to confess to something of being judged, you know, just show, show the honesty when you – we absolutely need to, you know. And we also are noticing that when people have a have a had a choice, when you can pick up on people's vibration enough, and you can tell that they have chosen to tell you the truth, and and then lead you down the path of what really is there, and then they're not putting you up on a sidetrack, which is the same as equating to you being lied to, you know. Tell them that you appreciate it. it. You know, it, it, verbally tell them, thank you for being so insightful and so, and thank them for being, you know, for being so great for what they're doing. Because people don't under, you know, are not. We have we've walked away so much from our emotions that we 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 don't allow ourselves to physically show emotions, except for there's two different kinds, and that's anger and there's happy. You know, and happy has kissing and anger has fists. And so we have forgotten how to appreciate the people that we do have around us and for their candor and who they are and not appreciate, you know, telling them how we appreciate them. Because you know, back, in, back in the old days, we would tell a woman that she looks, you know, beautiful that day. And, you can, I mean, you could tell a woman on the streets they're beautiful. Now you do it, and that's sexual harassment, you know? You know? Well, yeah, unless it's a starseed woman, they they appreciate and understand and, and take the intent behind it and understand that like I do with the intent. To me, it's really never, ever the cause or what the person did. I mean, sure, there's the exceptions like somebody did something to my children or something, but I look at the intent of why somebody did it because we're all – we all make mistakes and it's a learning process and who is anybody to judge anybody and – you know, I look at the intent and their honesty. I agree with you 100% on that. I, I'm tickled to death if somebody is that way with me and thankful and grateful, no judgment. And, man, I'll tell you what, brother, it sure as hell goes a long way to have somebody do that with you even once, you know. Yeah, it does. I mean, it, it renews your self-confidence and it makes you put your – feels it put, you put yourself in a better light to where you can be than a better beacon so people will gather closer to you. I mean, just like the, with the Pleiades Reiki healing. I mean, obviously there was a beacon there. I mean, we just didn't get 5,005 members just because we were looking pretty, you know. Because, goodness sakes, I am not pretty. <laughs> yes, this guy is a good wrestler, but he's no Ric Flair as far as looks. So, yes, I hear what you mean, though, brother. And so, I mean, so, I mean <laughs> I'm just putting that out there, man. Just putting that out there. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I, I agree with you, and obviously, I, you know, I was glad to to do it, and I'll tell you, and I've told the story a lot on Facebook real quick about those two groups, the Reiki group we're talking about, and of course the Pleiadian Twin Flame group. The Twin Flame subject I talked about on shows before, I was never wild about talking about the subject, not any kind of like, oh, well, I wasn't downing anybody for talking about it, but at the same time, I'm like, ah, bah humbug, and you could even tell the enthusiasm in my voice and shows I've done on it. It was so hard to keep but enthused. But I, we, I was talking in our regional group that we have when we our private chat with the other regional Pleiadian admins. And I'm like, okay, well, I've got these two thoughts that just popped into my head. What about these two groups? 
done with the regional creating of, re of the regional groups. So I thought, how about these two groups? And look how they've done, man. I mean, exactly. There was obviously, and you know what, really, though, Thomas Ray, I'll tell you, if we could have just brought joy to one person or gave one person, not 5,000 or whatever, one person something to look forward to or think about or to resonate with, then as far as I'm concerned, that 20 times over was worth it, you know? Right. It's, it's kind of like what goes with, I was speaking, we were talking about earlier, is that the people that I'm speaking with now, it amazes me to see how awesome, you know, I don't, I don't see what I do as being, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a very, I'm a very humble person, I am. And so to get praise, you know, I, okay, thank you, I appreciate it, awesome, cool, nuts, you know, love is there. But I'm a really hard receptor of that love. And so I just do what I do because it comes naturally to me. And I don't mind, I like being thanked, yes, but it's something I can completely do thanklessly. I don't need the praise and it's really overwhelming, and I do appreciate the praise, so don't stop. But for me, it's just, I have this ability, and I want to give it to as many people as I possibly can, because I can never use all the fortunes and the greatness and the wealth that I've learned, that, I, that I've gotten. I, I can never use it on myself. I want the next person to be able to do the next, you know, do that for me as I did for them, you know? Yeah, isn't that funny? The only issues either one of you have, either you or I have with that is the praise, you know, and, and it's made me even go into a shell a little bit sometimes, and I'd rather open up a comment to something hateful, nasty, than the, the pr I'm almost like, I don't know what it is with me, I love the praise, and yes, like Thomas said, don't stop it, but I don't know how to handle it, and it's, it kind of makes, it makes me feel uncomfortable, I like it, and I'm grateful for it, but maybe it's a self-worth thing within me still, I just don't feel worthy I'm not going to go into that at all. I don't feel worthy of it because really I do, I guess. But it's hard to digest that, isn't it? I mean, isn't that funny that that'd be the one thing that would, you know, out of this whole journey, you know, as far as this goes, the, the praise, once you get that or people commenting, saying nice things to you, it's, you know, I just, because I'd rather just, you know, make them look good and do what I can to help them or give them an opportunity if I can like people have done for me and you know it's really hard to take compliments it's so hard Hey, Thomas, are you there? <laughs> 